Hey, what's up guys? Fish Tank Mike here. Today we're going to be talking about five fish that are absolutely awesome and fantastic and then five fish that you should probably stay away from. This is all geared towards the beginner, of course, so if you're new to fish keeping, you just got your new tank, maybe you haven't gotten your fish yet, or maybe this is even the first video that you've ever seen about a fish tank, it doesn't matter. Hopefully this is going to point you in the right direction and save you from making uh, some potential mistakes. And guys, we're shooting this in front of the new big water box tank. We're getting fish tomorrow, so hopefully I can get that fish reveal video out to you guys as soon as possible. But anyway, let's just go ahead and start out with the fish that you want to get, the good fish, the ones that are easy, they're community fish, they can work together, and they're gonna be just awesome for pretty much any size of tank that you might have. The first fish is going to be the Cardinal or Neon Tetra. Depends on what you're into. These two fish are very similar. The Cardinal Tetra is just gonna have more red on it that's gonna extend from its tail closer up to the bottom of its head. Whereas the Neon Tetra is gonna have a little bit less red and it's gonna cut off about halfway through the body or a little past that. Both of these fish are really cool. They don't get super big. I mean, they're little like one inch fish tops and they're pretty much a default choice for planted aquarium keepers, non-planted aquarium keepers. You're gonna see these all over the place. I do always, of course, recommend that you go to like a, a designated fish store, not a big box store to buy livestock. I don't name names here on this channel, but I think you know what I'm talking about. Just don't go to those places. You never know where they're getting them from. When they got them in is also an important factor. And so just go to some place that you can trust. Somebody that's been keeping fish and selling fish for a super long time. We obviously want to support those stores the most as well. The second fish is going to be another one in the Tetra family. This is going to be the Rummy Nose Tetra. So the Rummy Nose is a super awesome fish. It's mostly silver. It's got a little bit of black going on on its tail and then it has a really distinct bright red head. Okay, and these fish are really good schoolers. They're gonna school up and behave uh, in that way if that's what you're looking for. I know a lot of people, especially new fish keepers, are looking for that schooling activity. I mean, I still am even at this point. In this tank, it would be awesome to have a bunch of schooling fish. I think that's something that we all want. So, uh, they're a great fish for that. The Cardinals and the Neons, they're gonna do that a little bit, but not really, not really to the extent that you want. But the Rummy Nose, they're just they're known for doing that and being really good at it. Number three is guppies. Okay, and this encompasses all types of guppies. There's a million kinds. Guppies are a super awesome community fish. They are pretty easy to breed. A lot of times they're just going to do it no matter what. So if you're into that and you want to see some activity in your aquarium, then that can be a really good choice for you. And guppies are just cool. There's lots of different flavors to choose from and they go along with pretty much anybody else. Number four is a pretty good algae eater. It's gonna hang out primarily on the glass of your aquarium but will also migrate around towards different surfaces and just kinda always be sucking on stuff. And that is gonna be the auto sinkless catfish or the auto cat. Unlike most of the fish on this list, I actually have some auto cats here. We've gone through kind of a transitional period pretty much over the last year where I don't have a lot of the fish that I want. We're going to try and fix that here very, very soon. But we do have some footage here of some auto cats there hanging out in this little tank up here before we move them into uh, one of the new aquariums that we set up here. But this is an awesome fish. It's just going to hang out, do its thing, suck on some algae, hopefully get rid of a little bit of it for you. and. They're very cool. We also have some pretty cool stickers and magnets of auto cats that are coming to the store here pretty soon. I'll show you some images of what they're gonna look like. Uh, link in the description. They might not be ready yet, but in a week or two, they should be available. Number five, we'll just wrap this up real quick with the Cory Cat. There's a ton of different Cory Cats. These are mini little catfish. They hang out down at the bottom of your tank. They don't get super big. And this is kind of unique, especially when you're talking about a catfish, because there's lots of catfish that can get super big. So make sure that they're a type of Cory Cat, a variety, a flavor, however you want to think of that. And uh, yeah, they're a really cool fish. Just make sure you get at least six of them. They like to hang out with others, and that's pretty much gonna go for all the fish that we've talked about so far. Okay, so now let's talk about five fish that you should stay away from if you're a beginner, you're picking out fish for the first time, or you're just new to all of this. It can be really tough, especially when you're at the fish store looking at stuff. You're a lot of the time seeing fish that are really young, and sometimes you can go and buy a fish that you think is gonna stay pretty close 
to that size, but that's actually the opposite of what happens. It gets super huge and then you have a problem. And that's gonna be the problem with most of the fish we talk about. Hopefully, again, if you're going to a store that's run by an experienced hobbyist, they're gonna be able to give you all of those bits and pieces of information to help prevent that. But just in case, let's talk about some that you should stay away from. Now, the first one, like all of these fish, there are always exceptions, right? But the first one I wanna talk about is staying away from goldfish. Now, we all know that there's a lot of goldfish out there. You got feeder goldfish, you got the fancy ones, like the ranchus that are all puffy and have some crazy fins, right? I just recommend that if you're new to fish keeping, stay away from goldfish because uh, you can get kind of into a world where there's a lot of different choices and if you don't have that kind of expertise of somebody telling you more specifics about it, you could end up getting something that gets really large or something that ends up polluting your tank a little bit more than you'd want. And so to elaborate a little bit more on that, um, goldfish are just, they're poopers. They put out a lot of waste into your aquarium. They're gonna put out a lot of ammonia, and if you're feeding a lot, maybe again because you're inexperienced, that could be an issue. Not 100%, again, there's always exceptions to all of this. I just recommend for most people, if you're new, just stay away from goldfish, wait a little while, get some experience, and then come back to that. The next one is gonna be the common pleco. So this is another fish that's super popular. You're gonna see it everywhere. And while there are a lot of different varieties, I am specifically talking about the common one, the, the gray or almost blackish, but not quite common pleco. And again, the reason for this one is that they can get to be like two feet long. Now, they're not gonna get to two feet in your 10 gallon aquarium, but they are still gonna outgrow that. They're gonna get big. And they do that you know, over the course of a few years, but it's just, trust me, it's a fish that you might like for a little while, but eventually it's gonna become an issue. So unless you're super into plecos and you really want one, I'd, I'd stay away from the common, look into the bristle nose and you know, different varieties that stay a little smaller, they still get to be like six inches, or they can, but just be aware that plecos do get big. Number three is gonna be the bala shark. So this is another common fish, you're gonna see it all the time. It looks like a shark, it's really cool, they swim fast, they look awesome, I probably already said that, um, but these fish do get big, they can become like a foot long. And as I mentioned before, that's probably not gonna happen in your 10 gallon tank, but it's just a fish that, unless you wanna take on that responsibility, I would just stay away from it. What are we on, number four now? So I think what I'm gonna do is loop two fish into one, and it's basically for the same reason. They get big. It's gonna be the Chinese and the Siamese algae eaters. Now I know what some of you are thinking. Siamese algae eaters are really good at eating algae. And even myself, I've had Siamese algae eaters a lot. I don't have any right now, like most of these fish, uh, unfortunately, but Siamese algae eaters do get big. They're six inch fish at one point in their lives once they get older, and once they get older, they stop really doing what you want them to do, which is eating algae. Chinese algae eaters are almost like the faux Siamese algae eaters. They're like the tricky one. They're kind of like, um, the flies that look like bees and you get scared because you think it's a bee, that's basically what a Chinese algae eater is. It's the fly. So they don't really do that good of a job at eating algae, not nearly as good as Siamese algae eaters do, but both of these fish do get pretty large, five, six inches, or they can. So again, we're mostly staying away from fish that um, you buy small and you think they're gonna be good for your 10 or 20 gallon, you get a couple of them, and then they turn out a year, two, three down the road to just be monsters. Now hopefully you're at a point two, three years down the road where you got some more tanks, oh, right? Hopefully you got some bigger tanks, uh, I think, yeah, right? We all know that we have a little bit of problems when it comes to fish tanks, guys, or especially when you start to really love them. But uh, yeah, you're just probably gonna wanna put those on the shelf for a while. And I think the last fish that the beginners should avoid are angelfish. So angelfish are really pretty. There's a lot of different varieties. You got the kois, you got the altums, right? Um, th they're just an awesome fish. I had a couple that were, uh, I don't know what variety were, they were black, just straight jet black angelfish. I took them from a friend who was moving his tanks around and they were cool fish. The problems with angelfish are th these two. 
One, again, they get big, like most of the fish that we've talked about. They will get, you know, six inches, and they're going to need some height because their finnage is really tall, right, body size-wise. So you're going to want to have a tank that's 20 inches, two feet tall, like this one, um, to grow those out to their full capacity. And, um, you know, you can have some young ones in a smaller tank, that's fine. You can start out with some in a 55, but if you're going to plan on keeping those fish long-term, you're going to want to really increase the size of your tank. Not everybody's into that. The other thing with angelfish is that they can get a little nippy on each other when they're breeding or, you know, to some other fish if there's not a lot of competition and they feel like they can bully up on other fish and so while that's not a hundred percent gonna happen all the time it could just be a thing that happens when they're in their mating season or you know um, it's just something to be aware of and if you're putting them in again a smaller tank then might not be the best situation and I've just heard that a lot of times from different people that I know personally is that like hey I got these angels but I really want to get rid of them because uh, they're mean right? Lack of a better word. So uh, just be cautious about angelfish. I think that it's probably not the best idea for somebody who's brand new and starting out with their first fish tank. So yeah, guys, that's the list. Uh, sorry we didn't have any real good video footage for most of the stuff on the list. Uh, I want to do more of these videos. They're fun talking about fish that I like, maybe more so than uh, I don't like, and then we'll actually have footage of them here down in the fish room. So let me know if you liked the video. I hope this helped. If you are new and you're starting out this journey of being into fish tanks, just be careful of how many tanks you get because that could uh, change the course of your life for the better but it, it will change it. But yeah, if you like this video, guys, please let me know down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. If you're new, I hope this helped you out and maybe steered you in the right direction and helped you avoid some potholes or potential problems that you could have when keeping fish tanks for the first time. And I think that's going to do it for today's video, guys. So thank you once again for watching, and we'll see you next time with new fish in this tank.